Okay, and a good welcome to everybody for another Sunday get together on Earth Save Zoom. Welcome to all of you, to our new guests, to our old friends, our regulars, and uh, we have some special guests. So I uh, look forward to everybody's participation. Uh, share with you what we're going to do today. We got a few things. Uh, before we start, if you'd like to turn on your chat on your screen and save the chat, uh, keep it open. You can save the chat at the end also for any useful information, any follow-ups, any correspondence that we may share, any uh, downloads or any websites. So uh, we can do that. All right. So here's the agenda for today. We are going to uh, do a, a show and tell with uh, Chef Estella, who's going to share with us her heavenly green smoothie recipe. And she'll do that in just a moment. We have the one minute intros from everybody. Kathy is gonna do her blog, Veganville TV blog. Rick Ryder is gonna join us with his uh, guitar sing along. That'll be the day, Buddy Holly's famous hit. We have Janie and Fern who are gonna do a tribute and a memoriam to the late Jack Weinstein. We have uh, Brigitte with her laughter and uh, laughter liberator, Brigitte. We have uh, Jeff, who will share some information on his Peas in a Pod blog, and a lot more. And we have a little video um, continuing a few minutes of the last week's video from YouTube on the Vegan 2019 with a, a short clip there. So without further ado, uh, let's start with the intros, if everybody would like to contribute a few things about themselves and what they hope to gain or what they wish to share uh, in our Earth Say get together. Would you like to start today, Chef Estella? Yes. Hi, everybody. I am Chef Estella, and I'm eager to present a different recipe each Sunday. Next. Mr. Vegan Man himself, please unmute. Okay, <clears throat> I'm uh, Jeff Tucker. <clears throat> um, this is somewhere between our 400 and 500th Eat, Educate, Entertain event. And um, we're looking for the next ones to be reaching a big audience out in Veganville land. Next. <laughs> All right, Brigitte, who's going to be uh, speaking today, would you like to unmute, please? Yep. <laughs> so uh, I am uh, Brigitte the Laughter Liberator, pioneering the uh, laughter lifestyle. And uh, I would be very happy to uh, share some more with that. I am right now in uh, North Carolina. And uh, yeah, good to be here. Welcome back. Okay, Mr. Rick Ryder, please unmute. Yes, just unmuted. Uh, yeah, I'm Rick, and uh, just hi, happy Sunday to everybody. And um, you know, I used to go to the the meetups, the meet, the get-togethers at EarthSave and Tamarack, and uh, hopefully someday you'll you'll get the same kind of a response that you did there because you used to get like about hundred. Uh, participants. So, you know, maybe need to get the word out, but uh, just here to listen to what, get some information from here, what people have to say about what they're doing. And uh, I'll grab my guitar a little later. <laughs> It'll be soon. Thanks, Rick. Okay. And Jamie, would you like to unmute? Okay, so I'm Jamie, and I'm actually well known for my strikingly good looks. And so. Uh, oh, thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> you didn't know me when I was a kid with Bucks Keys, but I've come a long way. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Jamie. Um, I've been attending the meetings at Tamara Community Center, Severse, I would say about five years, and I really enjoy the group. Um, I just try to bring my visualizations. Um, I write poetry, scripts, um, I'm a licensed massage therapist and a yoga teacher, and today I'll be glad to share um, a poem that I wrote, 
and a little meditation for Jack in honor of this, you know, memory of Jack. Thank you for letting me share. Welcome. Thank you very much, Janie. And now to Jamie, would you like to <laughs> unmute? <laughs> okay. There's so, another Janie. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, it's a girl's name and it sounds like Jamie. But uh, anyway, yeah, so it's Jamie and Anne right here. Hi. In Sarasota and just happy to be here. And we're going to sit down and uh, eat our salads and then our soup while we get together virtually with our, our safe friends. And let's save the world together. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Fern, would you like to unmute, please? Welcome again, Fern. Hi there. I'm happy to be here. It's the first time I've been on Zoom with you, anybody. <laughs> this is the very first time. And I'm, I'm happy to be here, I'm especially to honor my dear friend, Jack, who uh, so shockingly left us so quickly. And uh, I, was, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to enter the home and save many of the writings and, and beautiful photographs and pictures that his mother and also Jack created. And tonight at some point in the meeting, I'll be honored to read one of the works that I found that I didn't know even Jack wrote. And he wrote this back in 1974. And uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful that we were able to save that and have that. So when, whenever you tell me, I'll be happy to share that with everyone. And it's great to be here. Great to see you again. Thank you. And Kathy, would you like to unmute and? Uh... Sure. Uh, I'm Kathy and I do the two or three minute Veganville TV blog. And Barbara and I also have um, our little business, our Sprout business, Sprout Me. Um, and we would sell the jars and seeds at the, you know, our dinners, which I miss. But if we can't have the dinners, at least we have Zoom. Thank God for Zoom because I missed, I missed my group. So I'm glad we're here together. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. We'll see you in a few minutes. And uh, well, we'll speak to you in a few minutes. And welcome to Barbara. Hi, I'm Barbara Burke, and uh, like Kathy said, we are partners in this little venture that we have, and uh, we've been coming to the meetings, I don't know, how many years, a long time, and uh, we, we miss it, and we look forward for it to start again, and everyone vote, I do want to say that, you must vote, if you haven't already, and uh, that's all I have to say, thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Okay, let's move along. Welcome again to everybody. And uh, we're starting a few minutes late today, but we have our own Chef Estella, who's going to share with us a show and tell and a special heavenly green smoothie recipe, which is uh, one of her famous recipes. If you'd like oh, to unmute, unmute Estella. Yes, okay. yes, I'm here, yes. So this is the uh, um... I want to share the screen. I think that uh, it's uh, no, not yet. Let me share the screen. So uh, share the screen. And I think that this is it. Okay. Share. There we go. All right. So here we are. Thank you. This, this smoothie is from my Heavenly Eating ebook that I wrote in, with Jeff in uh, 2019. This is more or less for two to four servings. Um, I just wanted to make this uh, copy for you. It is uh, how people can start to drink some of the leafy green that are very difficult for some people. So this is really for a, for a beginner. And it's also good, this, this is a, something that you, can, that you can try twice a month just to cleanse your system and do it lightly for a couple of days. So um, here in the ingredients, just to have it light is two cup of filtered water or one cup of ice cubes and one cup of water. 
You can add a green or red apple, that is up to you. One tablespoon of wheatgrass powder. We were talking about uh, that it's better to have the, um, the fresh uh, wheatgrass. But for somebody who is starting for the first time, and they don't know how they're going to get and all that, it's, I think that is a good way just to start with the wheatgrass powder. Then also that is optional. Then they can add the E3 Life Blue Green Algae Capsule Powder. That is also optional. I will give, explain a little bit more about that. Two tablespoons of ground flax seed, three celery stock, one small cucumber, and two cups of leafy greens. Sometimes kale and collard, they are very, very, very strong. For, for somebody who is starting for the first time, the leafy green has a variety of um, baby chard, baby spinach, baby kale, and, and it's milder than, than the other greens. So that's why this is for somebody who is starting, say, I want to start drinking some green smoothies. Um, and of course, <clears throat> first blend the greens with water. This is to have a better um, smoothie. Then add the powers or the flax seed or the apples that you want to add. And then blend again. So you can have there your uh, green smoothie. If you want a sweeter, a sweet, sweeter, not so, um, for some people it's just very difficult, just add one or two. You can start with the red apple and once you find that that is sweet, so then less sweet, you can change to green apple. If you want a savory smoothie, that is, you can replace apple with cucumbers and or celery. So this is something that uh, you can do. The immune and, and superfood boosters, we talk about the wheatgrass. Wheatgrass has all the nutrients from the land. So it is important, sometimes people say, <clears throat> You are not grounded, you are not eating uh, anything from, from the land. So this, the, the wheatgrass, it is a, a very good option that is grown in soil to get the wheatgrass um, fresh, if, if you can, or if not, the wheatgrass powder. The uh, blue-green algae, this is an algae that comes from, um, from Oregon. And it has uh, the nutrients, all the nutrients from the ocean. And here I have, so then I will show the, the other bottle, you know, that um, <clears throat> you, can, you can see it has 65, it has 65, ingredients, uh, all, all type of minerals and amino acid. So with this one, you can add and you can start just having your, your, your uh, green smoothies. Um, from brain, for brain health, you can add the E3 Life Brain On. That also comes with that. So um, sometimes we said, what happened with our cells? Our cells need oxygen. And the best way that you can do is just to have a green smoothie every day because it has the fiber. So you want to have the fiber. And if you want to increase more, you can decide to start with the wheatgrass powder or with the E3 light that is the blue green algae and, uh, and if you want for the, for the brain, the, the company, and then I will show you, it will, it will, it has one that has uh, the blue green algae basic plus uh, other ingredients for the brain on, and it's considered a food. 
So it's not really a, a supplement. So it's, this, this is very important to cleanse your, your system. You have one every day and then monthly or every uh, 15 days, you can say, well, I'm going to, to do like uh, two days or a weekend and I'm going to eat light and I'm going to have at least three smoothies a day. So that uh, will help you to feel much better. And also it helps with your immune system. It's just a strengthen your immune system. And also you oxygenate your body from the inside out. Um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing and I want to show you, I think that everybody can see that, okay. Here, this is, this, this is the um, E3 life, okay? And it comes in capsule. And the only thing that you can do is just to take out the, the capsule and um, you can take out the, the, the capsule and put some filter water. And here, here you have, this is your, your E3 light that you can have at any time. So this is what I'm, and look at the color, it's, it's really very special, you know. So um, this one come from Lake, uh, from Claymouth Lake uh, in Oregon. So this is, this is how the capsule have that you can open or sometime you can carry in, in your purse and have it, you know, and you open the capsule and ask for some water. And it's something that uh, it give you immediate energy and also it's good for stress, to relieve stress also. It is very good, it works with your immune system and it gives you energy and it is considered a food that comes in powder. So, um, but this is, um, I just give you, I think that is there. If somebody wants to start with more recipes, there I have my book. And I have to tell you that all the proceeds from my book is for the Institute that uh, the Earth Literacy Institute that we studied in, um, in Tafit del Valle. This is in, in the province of, of Tucumán in the Northwest of Argentina. And we're going to have December 31st. So we're going to have our first uh, class in there with the, with five families and 11 person. And so we are very happy about that. Yeah, so I hope that uh, you can decide to have uh, this uh, green smoothie or to increase. And this is, as I say, something basic. In the book, I also have a, a recipe that is for more advanced people eating greens, uh, that it is the famous energy soup, the energy soup with the, with the sprouts uh, and um, also with the uh, uh, sprouts are the, the key thing. All right, thank you. I think that uh, if you have any questions, you know, just uh, that I can answer. Yes, I make, I make green smoothies, but I add um, cacao to it and pomegranate, so powder, so mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't come out green anymore. Does that uh, have anything to do with the effect effectiveness? Does it change it or, or are you adding uh, more elements to it by doing that? Well, if, if you want to add, uh, that is that is fine, you know, if, if, if you want to add some cacao or um, cacao is really an, an stimulant. So yeah, yeah. you want to have it, uh, if, if you are using this uh, just to have regularly, that's fine. But if you want to clear your system and eat lighter, so I would say that uh, 
Nibau, the, the cacao for now, and New Canada, for example, New Canada, uh, um, sunflower seeds, uh, or you can yeah. have also uh, pumpkin seeds. Yeah, I, I use pumpkin seeds, yeah. uh, uh, walnuts, cashews, mm -hmm. and uh, mixed greens. So I get I get a whole combination of greens and and uh, cucumber. But uh, yes, okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Just, just to have one green smoothie makes a lot of difference. Yeah. They make you feel good. Yeah, it helps my, it helps my stomach too. Exactly, yes. <laughs> one of the... Would any anybody... other question? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, if you have any other questions, you know where to reach Estella. So... Uh... Thank you very much for that presentation today, Estella. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to we're, we're going to segue now into our next item on our agenda, and that is Kathy. If you'd like to unmute Kathy, you're going to do the Veganville TV blog by uh, <laughs> Kathy. Okay, hi everyone. This is Kathy, and we have our second Veganville TV blog. And um, as I said, I hope to entertain and educate and stimulate the brain. And maybe if we use some of that brain on, we'll get it even more stimulated. I want to get some of that. And for this week, I want to say uh, for those parents or maybe grandparents whose children, grandchildren miss chicken nuggets, Walmart now stocks Mickey Mouse shaped vegan chicken nuggets. The D Disney themed nuggets are part of Morningstar Farms' new incognito range, which also includes plant based ground beef burger, burger patties, bratwurst, and Italian sausage, along with conventional shaped chicken nuggets. And if you don't want the Mickey Mouse, another fast food company has joined the vegan circle, and that's KFC. KFC, which is the second largest restaurant in the entire world, has now introduced plant-based Kentucky Fried Chicken at branches in the UK and Europe, China, Hong Kong, Vietnam, and across the United States and Canada. While KFC wasn't the only fast food chain to add vegan meat to the menu in 2019 or to expand options in 2020, it may be the only one to sell 100% of its products in, out in less than five hours. So obviously people do want even vegan KFC, not on any regular basis, but. Um, and I mentioned last week, I was gonna talk about seaweed, you know, that slimy stuff we see in the sea. Well, it turns out, although it's now hailed as a superfood across the West, eating seaweed is nothing new. The slippery sea plant has actually been consumed across Asia for thousands of years, particularly in China, Japan, and Korea. Seaweed is popular for a number of reasons. It's tasty, it's versatile, and it's nutritious. While each type has a different nutrient content, on the whole, all types are a good source of vitamins and minerals, including C, A, B, and E, iron, and iodine. And I have read that a lot of Americans are low in iodine. Um, seaweed also contains protein, fiber, carbohydrates, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Dried algae is particularly nutrient dense, whereas spirulina and chlorella are particularly high in protein. And let's see, I think that was it. Now, I did tell you I would entertain you. I'm trying to keep this under three minutes. I liked your squash joke, Jeff. I have to remember that. But So we'll do some vegan jokes. Remember, these aren't my jokes. How many vegans does it take to change a light bulb? Two. One to change the bulb, the other to check for any animal product. <laughs> Why? Why did vegans cross the road? They were protesting for the chicken. 
Okay, now this one we should get. What type of crackers do vegans never eat? Animal, Animal crackers. crackers. What is the best way to keep milk as fresh as possible? Leave it in the cow. And that's my entertainment for this week. And I hope to have some more interesting uh, things to share next week with you. Thank you so much, guys. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Kathy. We want to pay a very special tribute to a dear friend of uh, Earth Save, uh, Jack Weinstein, who recently passed. And uh, we have Fern, a very good friend for over 20 years, and uh, Janie, who are going to uh, extend a very nice tribute to their friend and uh, fellow in the community that we are going to miss. So uh, Fern, if you'd like to start and- uh, Sure. And I think, as I said before, uh, I found this among the papers at the home. And this is very special. I've never seen it after 27 years. He showed me a lot of things, but he never, he never shared this with me. And it is just beautiful. And he entitled it said master, meaning the master was speaking with him. And it goes this way. Do you want to be happy? Think of me. Is God omnipresent? Then how can you think that I left? Can a rose withhold its perfume? And how can you think that my love does not, does not still shape your way and does not surround you still? Did the light from my eyes ever de depart from you? Then how can you not know that I still dwell within your heart? Think of looking at my face and you will once again Feel my glance upon your face and the close personal love you always found in my smile. Do you love me? Then you'll keep my commandments and I command you to go within to where you'll meet with me again for I have never stopped coming to meet with you. I am looking for you every day and every moment. I had kept my word. Where are you? Have you kept your word? Are you crying again? Why not meditate instead? Tears of joy are far better than tears of regret. Meet me, meet with me, and we will go to the land of no more tears. Join me, and we will fly through worlds of scintillating light. We'll soar through realms of bliss and grandeur. Our laughter will fill the spaces of eternity and our happiness will flow down and bubble over to help and lift countless sad, dry, lonely hearts. I will flow, I will flood your spirit with so much love that you will rush forth and soar through creation, flashing through universes, shouting your joy and your master's name. As you meditate, ever renewing that love within you, you will come to realize it, that it had not, it had been effulgently filling and enveloping you all along. You will find that you are and ever had been encircled, enmeshed in that benevolent net of love always. Gigantic waterfalls of torrential bliss will cascade through your being and rainbows will form within the infinite reaches of your heart. And you will know forever and beyond who I am and why you are. So such a special, such a special thought, prayer. And did we know that Jack was as deep a spiritual being as he truly is? 
And Jack, wherever you are right now, I have a feeling you're right here and you're hearing everything. And I sure hope you are because we're sending our love to you and we'll miss you. But I know we will meet again because love cannot be separate and love never dies. God bless you, sweetheart. Can you tell us the title of the poem? The title of the poem is Said Master, meaning Master Said, but he wrote it as Said Master. Can you hold it up? It's, it was handwritten or typewritten? It's handwritten, yes. You see? And, I can, and, and I wrote a little bit to clarify some words so I can literally uh, you know, give you a copy that's not written over. Yes, when, when I meet you, let's take pictures of those pages. Yes, absolutely. And we, can, and we, can, we can send them out, absolutely. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much, Vern, from all of us. My pleasure. I'm so happy to be able to share that, and I'm so happy to honor my dear friend who has such a beautiful heart and so giving and so kind and so loving. So I just, I'm happy to be able to, I'm happy I found that. I'm happy I was able to go to the house and search out all these papers because believe me, there were papers everywhere. Jack saved everything in 1952, <laughs> there were papers. And I was able to, his, his niece was nice enough to let me search through everything to find these treasures. And this is a treasure. Great, great, thank you. Uh, Janie, would you like to join us now and continue this uh, tribute and uh, meditation that you had planned for your special friend? Yes, hi. I just unmuted myself. Yes, I'd like to start with a poem that I wrote and then with like a little meditation, uh, which is called We Remember Them, People Who Have Passed. Um, so it's called, thank you for letting me share, first of all. It's called Rest Jack Rest. Jack, you will be missed. Your energy we will, never, will never be forgotten. For your love was always unconditional. Your positive spirit was always inspirational. We will never forget you, Jack. You are now free. Your spirit will always be in our hearts, you see. So rest, Jack, rest. You always try to do your best, your very best. You are now in a world of peace, a place where your pain will cease. So rest, Jack, rest, because we love you. Okay, that was the poem. And now I will share, we remember them. Um, for those of you who are not religious, but it just is in a book that I found, um, at the prayers of comfort that are some that are used sometimes at um, you know Jewish funerals, um, but I think it's for everybody, and I really liked it. I thought it was you know quite meditative, and I've even posted on Facebook for everybody um, at another time. So it's called "Everybody Wants to Take a Deep Breath In and Exhale and In Again and Exhale." Jack would like that we were all relaxed, and it's called We Remember Them. At the rising of the sun and its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Thank you for letting me share. 
I'm sure Jack, like Fern said, is watching from above, and he's with us in spirit. And um, thank you for letting me share this today. Thank you, Janie. That was very nice. You're welcome. Beautiful, beautiful work. Would you like to say any uh, other words, Jeff? Uh, <clears throat> well, as I said, we are uh, preparing um, possibly a you know, more lasting tribute to Jack, and that is based on his amazing hand sketches, thousands of like geometric-like designs, patterns, and we're going to collect them and compile them and see if, if we can publish them. It's, it's, uh, it is what it is, and that's all I can say. Thank you very much. And we asked during the break if it would be uh, respectful to uh, follow this uh, tribute with a uh, little music. And uh, two of his friends said yes, uh, several of us said yes. So that's what Jack probably would have wanted. So uh, with that in mind, it. with that in mind, thank you, Fern. With that in mind, um, Let's, let's uh, all say, uh, may he rest in peace and may uh, Jack's memory be for a blessing to all of us. Uh, Mr. Rick Ryder yes. is going to entertain us now with a song that is uh, maybe familiar to most of us. I feel, I feel a little funny about doing it, because, but everyone says it's, it's okay, it's proper. Yes. I know in, in the deep, deep South, when they have a funeral, they, they always follow it with some upbeat jazz. That's right. Right after the funeral. So, uh, it's because, uh, I just need a minute to grab my guitar. Okay. I'm going to put the lyrics on the screen for everyone. If you care to join in the sing along, you can uh, do that. Yes. It starts off with the chorus. So, we'll, the first part is the chorus which everyone can join in and we'll do that a couple times and then I'll play a verse and then we'll go back into the chorus. So it'll give everybody a chance to, to join in. Just want to know, can you see me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, you see the color of my guitar? Yes. <laughs> yes. It, it looks like the fruit. Oh. Great. Uh -huh. Can you see Rick on the screen and the lyrics, everybody? Yes. Okay, because yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm spotlighting him. Okay, go. Anytime you're ready. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. That'll be the day you make me cry. You say you want to leave. You know it's a lie. That'll be the day when I die again. That'll be the day. You say goodbye, that'll be the day. You make me cry, you say you want to leave. You know it's a lie, that'll be the day when I die. You give me all your money and your turtle dove and your hugs and kisses and your money too. You know you told me, baby, you say, oh, baby, that someday that I'll be blue. Well, that'll be the day. When you make me cry, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. You say you want to be, you know it's a lie. That'll be the day when I die.
Great. Very Yay, good. that was beautiful. Thank you. And I think Zach would have liked that. It, it was very upbeat. Absolutely. Oh, and it really is. And that's, that's okay. exactly how we felt. That'll be the day when I die. I'm going to lift 140. <laughs> Just, well, he is. Right. You will, or he will. He's living in his spirit. Right now. Maybe he was up there dancing. I bet he was. Let me tell you. <laughs> I bet he is. <laughs> yep. Thank sure you. Thank you very much, Rick, as usual. We appreciate it. Okay. We're going to move along now to uh, introduce again to those uh, that know and uh, introduce for the first time for those that are joining us. Uh, the laughter liberator, Brigitte, is going to join us. So if you'd like to unmute, the floor is yours. Uh, so, hello. Uh, yes, I am, as to said, the uh, laughter liberator, pioneering the laughter lifestyle. And especially after hearing uh, about Jack, I wish I had known him. I, I don't know if I did or not, but it was very touching. And life is really, really precious. And uh, one thing, this is why I just see that when we are born you know we the first the first developmental life life marker is what what is it when we are born when the baby is born what's the first thing we're waiting for we are waiting for that smile and when that baby smiles and we forget about everything <laughs> And uh, so we are all born smiling. And as children, as babies grow up, they smile more and more. And by the time they get uh, into two or three years old, they smile about two to 300 times a day. And going back to us, to adults, to grown ups, how often do we smile? How often do we laugh? Uh, there are some statistics floating around that we are laughing around 10 times average a day, some more or some less. So what happened in between? What happened to us? And uh, I, I think that actually laughter, laughter is our connection to our soul. It goes very, very deep. And um, very often we as adults, we are told like, oh, this is superficial. This is not, you know, this is silly. Uh, there is nothing to laugh about it. And, uh, you know, just, just that is very childish. So we lose the ability to laugh. Also we think, because I believe that since we were children once, we all know how to laugh. Uh, it's just maybe there's some cobwebs and it's, it's just deep inside us, but, but we all know how to laugh. And uh, when we learn to laugh again, I think then our life will improve because it helps us to connect with our real self. Uh, and babies <laughs> you know it's it's amazing because uh you know i i have had the uh, privilege of watching my grandson for the first year of his life and i was just thinking you know so everything is exciting no matter what everything gets explored and these babies live in the now they have no idea about tomorrow about yesterday or about warring. They just live with their whole body, with, with their whole face. And uh, once I actually, the way how I heard about laughter was uh, from uh, one lady, I, I had a congregation, I'm a pastor. And so this one lady comes up to me and said, oh, pastor, I just want to tell you, my mother is a completely different person. And so I said, well, tell me more about it. 
And then she said, well, you know, uh, she just joined the laughter club and uh, she turned from somebody complaining and whining all the time to somebody who is really fun to be with. And uh, should, we, should we have that at our church? And I was a little bit, oh yeah, <laughs> at a church laughter. Uh, but then I did some research and um, yes, we did laugh at our church every Sunday after the service, we stood in front of, uh, in front of the church and uh, people, I was very surprised, even like sour pusses, people who wouldn't do anything in a church who wouldn't participate, they are participated in this laughter circle. And so this is how I found out about laughter. And, uh, and, and so another time I will tell you about some, some other amazing things that happened. But um, so I, I have been a laughter professional now for more than 20 years. And I have performed all over the world. Uh, a lot, a lot of times I was in India and uh, there was one person uh, I, I did a presentation at a college and, uh, you know, I just chose him because to demonstrate. And then he told all his colleagues and everybody uh, at the end of, of my presentation that this was the first time he laughed in 10 years. Just imagine 10 years. And I didn't know if I should be happy or if I should... You know, if, if I should be uh, sad for him for spending a life without 10 years. And uh, I am now working at uh, putting, getting my website together and also creating a course for people. And so uh, I am uh, here. Actually, uh, you're very lucky because you are the first time I, I am presenting uh, what, uh, what I was thinking about. Um, I was thinking of an acronym of laughter. Right? And, and this is laughter is living. Live life authentically and lighter. Because once we can laugh about something, then we can actually deal with it. It doesn't matter. You know, if we, if we get a, a huge bill, we can either cry about it and be so sad and we just have to pay or we can laugh about it. <laughs> and uh, we have to pay, to pay the bill anyway, right? whether we're crying or whether we're laughing, but we might as well have some feel-good hormones uh, out for us. So the L for laughter is living, live life authentically and lighter. Then the A is for laughter is accessing laughter as our superpower because it is really the superpower that we always have with us that always can help us. And again, I could talk to you for a long time about why I'm saying that all the benefits that laughter have uh, but I'll do this another time, probably. Uh, so, and, and then we come to the uh, you. It's, it's understanding and appreciating where we are in life. You know, we are right here now and appreciate that, yes, we have to celebrate it, Jack's life, which is actually, as I've pointed out, it's, it's uh, not gone. It's just they are with us in a different way. Right? The, the, the spirit, it's, it's our hearts have been touched. So understanding and appreciating where you are in life. Then L-A-U-G, G is giggle. Let's giggle to lighten up our mood and to be learning how to play, to be more playful. And uh, hope. G-H is hope, hope for the future. You know, if we don't have hope, then 
something is really missing in our lives because um, there are people also waiting for us and looking at us. And if we lose hope, we, we, uh, because life will, will go on, it will continue. And somehow we have to adjust and think of some, some tree, for example, that really shouldn't be alive anymore, <laughs> you know, but, but the tree somehow, somehow just uh, grows that. So hope for the future. And we have the time, have the time to embrace it. Have time right now, because time is pressured. And uh, be empowered, be empowered, the uh, e, empowered to reinvent yourself, to, to see life a little bit different. And the R in laughter is uh, re reignite your wisdom so think of things that you always wanted to do and that you didn't have time to do or something you know that you did not take time to do uh, a, a trip or you know something or you want to read a book so this is laughter the word of laughter so again i want to say just that laughter is is very deep it is not superficial and it has so many benefits. And we talked about last time, do you remember when we said we, we clapped, ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Yes, uh, and, and this is when we change laughter exercises. And what we also want to do, we want to get in touch with our child likeness with our inner child and so we have a cheer and it says very good very good yay very good very good yay and so i want to invite you to just uh have a go for a few exercises with me laughter exercises because uh, i am uh, teaching a way to laugh without reason and so I don't rely on jokes, uh, comedy or humor, which is fine. It's, it's totally fine, but it's not always available to us. But our laughter is always available to us at any time. And, uh, you know, we, we just feel good when, when we're laughing. So um, we, we can just, uh, you know, maybe uh, for check, check, this is, uh, if you see us, this is really appropriate because we can, the exercise I showed you, we can just pretend to cry and then to laugh. So let's just all pretend to cry for a little bit. Uh, follow me. <laughs> And now let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you guys should uh, unmute yourself so that we unmute. Uh, can hear. So uh, okay, let's let's try one more time. We're crying. <laughs> oh, I feel so sad. <laughs> 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 and now we laugh for the joy of remembering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we change exercises with ho, ho, ha, ha, ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, ho. ho. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, we uh, remember last time we did the exercise with a milkshake. We, we uh, took two things, whether it's a milkshake, it can be a smoothie, but two things that are mixed. And so we're just mixing it together. And we, so, we say, ah, oh, and then we drink and we laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go. Uh, yeah. oh, 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 o
time. Ah. Oh. I think. Ah. 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 Very good. Very good. Very good. Yay. Very good. Very good. Yay. Do you do we have time for another exercise or is that yeah, good. we are running out of time? So I, I I would love to hear your feedback to uh my uh, laughter acronym <laughs> and um I am, yes, I'm glad. Thank you that I could be here and uh, laugh with you and uh, we'll be laughing again in other sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anka. Yes, your, your acronym is just uh, very well thought. So I really admire you. It's not easy to find a theme just with the with one letter. So you did a great job with, with, the, with the acronym and the real meaning. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> do we have any more feedback or do we want to go on with our program? I really appreciate this because very soon this is going to be online, I hope. Once I can figure out how to, uh, how, how to download everything. Yeah, let's... Stu is not, unmuted, not muted, it's muted. Thank you. Okay. Come back again and do, you know, we need this, we need this, Brigitte. Next week, oh, yeah. the week after. Excellent. Uh, how about Peter? Could, would you introduce yourself, Peter? Would you like to unmute? I think you press the uh, star key on the phone. You know, that's Ringo's last name, star key. Yeah, Starkey. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> True. <laughs> hey, Stu, why not show show some of that video before yes. I go? Okay, we can do that. That's good. All right, let's move along to the video, and uh, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, uh, some of you, uh, well, those of you that, that were with us last week saw the first uh, six or seven minutes of it. We're gonna continue and uh, show you what it's all about uh, and we'll continue it. It's from the Vegan 2019 film. You can check it out online in its entirety and uh, we'll watch this now. Hopefully there's not a commercial that starts. The plant-based food system was already being bolstered in particular by one company in 2019 called Beyond Meat. After large-scale investment and nearly a decade of research and development, the Californian-based company went public. So what's really interesting about this is it's a $1.4 trillion market that has seen very little in disruptive innovation uh, recently or, or throughout, throughout history, actually. And so what we're able to do here uh, is bring a new technology into the marketplace, a new approach that enables people to continue to consume all the products they love, whether the burgers, sausage, et cetera, but do it in a way that's a little better for them and a little better uh, for, for the planet. Back in 2009. Uh, it was great. I mean, it was amazing to, to meet all the... Really, uh, wow. That's incredible. <laughs> Vegan burger startup beyond me got their initial public listing off to a sizzling start as its share price almost tripled to make it the biggest U.S. company IPO since the financial crisis of 2008. It counts Leonardo DiCaprio, Jessica Chastain, and even Microsoft founder Bill Gates 
as investors, and it's environmentally friendly. Its signature product, the Beyond Burger, reportedly uses less water, less land, less energy, while also generating fewer greenhouse gas emissions as compared to your average beef burger. As Beyond Meat began to offer vegan products in the meat aisle in various stores, its competitor, Impossible Foods, also signed deals with major distributors, and a race began to take over the $1.3 trillion a year meat market. Beyond Meat's biggest current competitor is another plant-based company, Impossible Foods, valued at just below a billion dollars, according to Pitchfield. It's all heating up. Impossible Foods also joined forces with Burger King to release an Impossible Whopper just last month. I don't know if you've heard of the Impossible Burger. If you have not heard of the Impossible Burger, it is delicious. They're all going after the $1.3 trillion global meat industry. As meat substitute products grew in popularity, the whole market began to shift. The beef industry is fighting to keep market share from uh, slipping to new plant-based substitutes. Various meat and dairy brands release plant-based products including global pork company Smithfields and leading cheesemaker Applewood, as well as Tyson Foods, the second largest producer of meat in the world. And as the vegan food sector began to win over public opinion, it also became a pop culture staple. Move over soy, there's a new trendy milk in town. Oat milk. <laughs> You posted this, you've started a vegan roast dinner. Um, and then Piers Morgan replied, oh, for f sake, Ramsey, not you as well. This looks utterly revolting. I disagree. I, I actually think, think it looks pretty good. What do, you, so what do you say to this, to Piers' um, critique? So Piers Morgan is now a food critique. Yeah, sure. Go and f yourself. <laughs> in the last 12 months, there's been more innovation than in the last 12 years in plant-based foods. Caught up in plant-based news. Plant-based news. It's an interesting publication. This is the news, OK? This is the real news. The message we can get out today is that people need to increase their plant base in their diets. Veganism is on the rise, so we got to adapt. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just have to, uh, yeah, eat a slice of humble pie. As the vegan sector began to win over popular opinion, Vegans began appearing on TV more and more. A little about myself, I'm a vegan. Yes, I'm a vegan, which means I don't. Yeah, all right, thank you three vegans. All right, I appreciate it. So a vegan, we don't eat animals, we don't eat meat or whatever. And the reason I decided to be a vegan is because I had a dog and I fell in love with my dog and I was like, I can't eat my dog, you know, I can't, can't do it. And I know most of us don't eat our dogs, you know? But we eat pigs and guess what? Pigs are smarter than dogs. Pigs are smarter than chimpanzees, they're just ugly. And you can't eat something just because it's ugly. Because if that's the case, some of y'all looking tasty tonight, right? That's it. I'm being rich. Do you eat any animal products at all? Or do I, you don't? Jim and I haven't had any animal products in six and a half years. And we are bursting with energy and health and like. It is uh, about how this diet affects the world. Not just uh, personal health, but also sustainability and ecology animals and this is what i care about so i'm really privileged to be part of that team this is the 112th time that david has donated blood a vegan for 27 years he says he wants to challenge the notion that vegans lack vital vitamins <laughs> As demand for vegan products grew, supermarkets, brands, restaurants, and fast food outlets continued to release options. Margarine giant Flora made its whole range vegan, and pizza chains updated their menus with vegan cheese and meat. It looks like meat. Believe me, it tastes like meat, but there is no meat in any of these three pizzas. Domino's Australia will launch three plant-based pizzas, the first in Australia from September. Supermarkets competed, 
releasing new products led by Marks and Spencer's new plant kitchen range. And fast food giant KFC filed a vegan friendly sandwich selling out in just days. KFC is now finna go vegan, man. KFC released their first vegan burger, guys. KFC released their first vegan burger. KFC is a new vegan chicken burger. KFC, if you don't grow this out in all of your stores, I'm gonna be incredibly sad. But as more and more vegan products were launched, it was becoming increasingly clear that many of them relied on a globalised food system with ingredients that were highly processed. The vegans, I know that. Okay, there's a commercial. I don't know what it's about, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll say at this time, we're welcoming any comments from the audience. And uh, if you want to make any uh, statements about uh, what's happening and all these companies that are getting on the bandwagon and restaurants and, uh, and all that. Anybody want to uh, contribute some uh, of their thoughts? Yes, yes. I have to say that uh, this movie made a lot of difference in, in Europe and also in Argentina. Argentina is one of the countries in which the vegan, the young vegans are increasing. So they really care about the animals. And these kids, they were already born with a different sensitivity from us. And um, in Buenos Aires, for example, you have a lot of a small um, entrepreneurship business and they make the milk, they make the plant milk, they make all type of hamburgers uh, and it's, it is really increasing. So I, I have to say that if people have to to um, eat uh, these uh, burgers that may not be very healthy here in the United States. Well, it is just, I think that we have to accept. I'm really concerned about their health, but just to start, we have to see as many of them told me, we are vegan, not like you. We care about the animals. And for us, sometimes it's very difficult not to eat meat, but we do it because we care for the animals. So it is a different type of, uh, uh, of new vegans, uh, I would say. And I think that uh, this is one of the greatest movie in 2019. It made a lot of difference. In, in Europe and also in Argentina, as I say, as the, as the number of vegan are, are increasing. That's it. At the moment. Okay. Thank you, Estella. Do we have another uh, volunteer that would like to comment from their perspective? Yes, this is Kathy. And I really enjoy the vegan movies like this. I learn an awful lot from them what they're doing throughout the world and all. And um, I just wish we could show this, you know, to more meat eating people. Um, but I, I, if people would realize that more plants, more healthy living, uh, it'll get there just not as fast as we'd like it. But uh, with this climate thing, as long as we have the right people <coughs> pushing for us, we might get more done on climate change and people might become more aware of how much factory farming contributes to climate change and deforestation and keeping millions of people starving because they're not feeding them the soy and the grain, they're feeding that to the animals, not to people. So I am enjoying, even if it's only a few minutes each week, I'm enjoying watching this, thank you. And unfortunately, I have cats meowing. I have to go feed about seven or eight cats now. But I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Anyone else? Is there anyone who is not inspired by that vegan 2019 documentary? 
uh, I mean, it just <clears throat> lays it down for us. We're on the right track, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think we are. I am so happy to see that more and more more companies are embracing that and that it is becoming more and more ma mainstream. And yeah, that's fantastic. So um, should I do a peas pod blog, which is sharing some screens, Stu? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're at the last uh, part of our event for today. Yeah, sure. We're gonna introduce uh, Jeff and he's going to uh, be doing his peas pod blog. And he's <laughs> okay, go right ahead. Jeff. Okay, so peas is P-E-A-S, but it's not just those little green things, it's positive earth actions. And pod is not just a seed pod, but it's our group that we are one of 500 plant pure groups in the world today. We are possibly the largest one of the 500 or we're close to it, but that's okay. Don't tell anyone. Um, and so we are representing T. Colin Campbell and all the good science there. But here at home, we at EarthSafe have some very well-kept secrets, like the fact that we're not just EarthSafe. Does anyone here know how many nonprofit organizations we are? Take a guess, give me a number. Do I hear eight? Yeah, we're eight organizations. Look at this. We have, we are the Vegetastic Charity for a Better World. Can you all see that? Yes. Yes. Um, and it's based on a little thing called Vegetastic Philanthropy, which I'm happy to say has been influential in the world. It may sound presumptuous, but uh, we, we have been one of the first foundations that has supported dozens and even hundreds of companies and organizations to grow. Um, they've actually outgrown us by far. And now we are just a little blip on the horizon, but we have big plans. So we've been working since 1996 and um, we have projects and we have funds. So our program now, from now until the end of the year is this little thing here, give now, donor 365, make a better world today. Now, how much do you want to, how much does someone have to give? Well, they can be an earthy and give up to $25. They can be a saver, like an earth saver, uh, which is $26 plus. They can be a supporter for 100, protector for 250, a guardian for 1,000. Don't Stay with me now because <laughs> you may not be the one who becomes a benefactor for 10,000 or a philanthropist for 50,000, or a founder for 250,000, or a visionary for a, hunt for a million, but I'm asking you to maybe find a few people that you know, and that might actually believe in this cause and um, join our philanthropy circle. I promise that we will use the money honestly and um, creatively and conservatively. Now, we have eight different funds, which I think I'd like you to see. The first one is named in honor of Bennett Josephson. I know some of you have known Bennett Josephson, um, fabulous guy, 
amazing talent. And he ran the vegetarian singles group for 25 years. Um, and uh, this fund is named after him. If, if someone wishes to donate to Earth Save, that's the same Earth Save you know, operating for 24 years, you push that little donate button. Now, this is Rin Berry. Rin Berry is one of the best known scholars in the vegan world. He's surrounded with a black frame. He passed away after he did an event in Tamarack with us about four years ago. Don't hold me to that, but he was there in October and we did some of his plays because after he became one of the great scholars in, in the vegan movement, he, was, he wrote books like This Thick, you know, the scholarly works about early vegan religions, vegan culture, famous vegans, all that through history. Um, and so we created Friends of Veg Vegetastic Art and Estella and I have been pretty excited that we had performances in theater companies. Um, our biggest performance was at the Arsh Center. Did you know that? <laughs> Um, we didn't make money, but we certainly made history by bringing a, an incredible black vegan performer down from Broadway. That's Veg And then we have Veg Save Rescue Services. Veg Save actually does save people. Um, we actually have are helping people who are in need of. Um, support, services, and we have given thousands of hours and um, something like $60,000, $70,000 to help a number of people who are distressed, dysfunctional, disabled, disenfranchised, and dissed. Uh, we have a new legal services committee that provides legal services to people who are vegan um, or working with vegan causes. And then we have this Nalith Education 2020, which is my big dream that we hope to have a vegan bank, a vegan community where people can live and retire we are looking to build a vegan temple, believe it or not, and a vegan university, which would not just be college level, but a lifelong university. Number six is Sisterhood Mujer Mariposa. This is written in Spanish because virtually everyone is a woman. Maybe, do we have any men, Estella? Well, it's mostly women, mostly women who are um, struggling, many uh, immigrants. It, it, it served many women who are battered and, and um, so forth like that. Uh, next we have, this is Estella's favorite. She created Ukupacha Earth Literacy Center and believe it or not, with our pesos and pennies, that's all we've got now is pesos and pennies, but we managed to open up a, a, a remarkable center way up in Northwest Argentina in the high mountains. And we are starting vegan teaching and programming, mostly for the children there and their families. And Within a week, a couple of weeks, Estella is going to do the very first international workshop with five families from Argentina, and it's 11 people, parents and children. Um, it's going to be an amazing thing that we managed to break through um, and do it so far away. The Vegetastic Global Projects is my baby. And we've got a whole bunch of innovative projects that we created. Chant Yum, the Culinary Alchemy Kitchen Lab. That's what Estella has. It's 
it's our kitchen really, but it's where she does her culinary alchemy research, development, creates new recipes, feeds people at the potlucks and produces food for our veg save clients who we're saving, we're working to save them from diseases and bad management and bad health care. Um, we have something called the Heavenly Food Bible. We have Home Save. We have the Heavenly Eating Club. Um, we have Earth Guardians. We have Matrix Research, Martin Luther King Legacy, Sabbath Save, Veggiepedia, and more. And that's the Vegtastic Charities. Um, okay, so well, we, the next thing we have to we have to raise money. So how can you raise money if you don't have, let's say, a million dollars to invest and get dividends, or you don't have like a fabulous business that you can just turn to the nonprofit side? Well, we created the V Store. And we promise that the products and companies are usually the best that we could find in the world. Of course, they're mostly located in the United States, but there's a list here. And some of these you order already know. Hippocrates Health Institute, um, the John Robbins and, and, um, and Ocean Robbins, Food Revolution, the E3 Live company that has this incredible blue-green algae product from the uh, Klamath Lake. And there's a few others, fabulous things. So I'll just read to you what our, what are we selling for God's sakes? We're selling plant-based, eco-friendly, super healthy, immune boosting, detox, organic, non-GMO, self-care, safe home, superfoods, non-addictive, 5G EMF protection, socially responsible, non-toxic, high-tech, V-classified, fair price products and brands. I imagine that's impressive, but I must confess that if any of you have gone to the V store since it started about 10 months ago, you probably didn't buy anything. And that was my fault because the store was like not complete. The links were broken. The pictures were poor quality. It had a million handicaps. And you would say, well, what's, what's up? Well, the store is basically open for business today. And um, I invite you to go to VStore. I put a link there. You could look it up on our website because we have products like these. The one on the upper left, does everyone know Pat Herskind from our Tamarack? She's the t-shirt lady. She made this incredible artwork out of recycled junk, you know, stuff that you find, refuse, debris, she made this fantastic artwork that we're selling for $300 and half of it will go to EarthSafe as a fundraiser. These two guys, John Robbins and Ocean Robbins, we represent the food revolution and they have these probably maybe the greatest summits on the planet right now because they are the masters. They created EarthSafe 35 years ago and I followed them and I basically, in 1996, I said, when I met John Robbins, I said, I am following you. And I came back to Miami and I started, I helped to start three EarthSafe chapters. We have this incredible laboratory that you can go and you can get the lab tests that you want at a really good price without having a doctor say, well, you know, you'll have to come in, I'll, you should pay me to take the blood, pay me to do the interpretation, pay me, blah, 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 pay me, pay me. 
but you can get these do tests done directly. 400 tests, testing vegan elements, testing vegan nutrients, testing blood sugar, testing everything, hormones. We have the Sprout Man organic wheatgrass seeds right here, 25 bucks. This is the real Sprout Man stuff. He died, but his company was taken over. Um, we have this charcoal cloth that it protects against, you wanna hear? Radio, radioactivity, biological threats like viruses, and chemicals. You put this cloth on your air conditioning vents and it, and it cleans your house. We've got this zero EMF earbud. When you put your earbuds in, they're letting the EMFs go from your phone into your ears. Well, this one doesn't. And it's only $40 with our EarthSafe discount. Um, I clicked that. Well, anyway, I have a lot of products on the store, including this one, which I started wearing last week. This little machine goes around your, you wear it on a strap and it cleans the air wherever you are. If you're in an airplane, if you're in a restaurant, if you're at home, if you're walking around, you wear this little machine, it's very quiet and it creates ozone and super ions. And it's $129, but you can get it for much less. Then we have this product right here. It's behind me. I drink it every day. I drink a little bit every day. I say, this is the greatest single supplement ranking up there with wheatgrass, ranking up there with wheatgrass. And I am just waiting to get more people to find miraculous things happening. And um, that's all. That's my blog for right now, trying to tell you the, uh, the other side of the story. Stu, what do we have? We have next week, right? I'm gonna stop screen sharing. How can I cut this off now? Let's see. Okay. Stu, you're, you're, you're muted. Yes, I, I'll repeat what I said, which is thank you very much, Jeff, for your presentation. Of course, if you haven't checked out our website with all the information as a resource and all of the information and our vStore and uh, notifications uh, about the events that we have coming up in addition to on Facebook and meetup.com, I uh, want to thank everybody for their participation and joining us today and their contributions, uh, what they've shared with us today. I want to thank you for that. And uh, we'll stay for another minute or so afterwards if anybody has any questions or would like to uh, share some uh, closing thoughts. But um, thanks again for joining us. See us next week when we're going to have another fun Sunday Zoom. And uh, thanks for joining us. Okay. Have stay on. Day. Stay on. If you want to stay on, let's talk. Let's. Thank you, Stu. I want to thank you because you are doing a great job. Thank you very much. No, okay. he's not. He's not yeah. doing that. It's not that great. Estella, come on. I did recognize and say so. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Thank you so much. Enjoy, enjoy your dinner, everybody, if you haven't eaten. Right. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. It was great. Okay. I want to say thank you to thank you. Ms. Fern. And I want to thank you for enabling us to have a memorial for Jack tonight. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing all that. Yes.
All right, everyone, have a great night.